Hi, everyone. Max Emmer here from Emmer Law, and I brought my good friend and colleague, Brett Sherman, who's a noted clinical therapist and divorce specialist, on to talk about this. What are the common fears and anxieties children have of going through divorce? And is there any best way or best practice to minimize or mitigate those concerns or anxieties for children at the beginning or during the pendency of the divorce process? Brett? Hi, Max. Thanks for having me. I'd love to talk about this topic. Um, yeah, it's something that comes up all the time, both in, in my private practice and in our collaborative divorce work all the time. Um, so I'll dive right in and, and just kind of, as a general thought, just make sure that we're all on the same page in, in, in quickly understanding that in general, kids are egocentric, right? So across the they board- just think about them, They think about themselves. Kids think about themselves, right? Um, and, and what does that mean in the world of divorce? It means uh, they're going to think this is about them. It has to do with them. Is it their fault, they might wonder? Um, and how is their life going to change, right? That's kind of the quick thought that's going to come into play for kids when they're hearing this news. Um, and along with that, I'm going to kind of move over to the parent side for one quick deviation and just say our role as parents is going to become reassuring our kids that this is not their fault, of course, right? So that's the support role that we're going to have to ultimately play. But for kids thinking of this egocentrism and saying, okay, um, you know, this is must be my fault. My parents are getting divorced because of me and my life is changing. And these are all of the ways that's the immediate thought that's going to happen. So kind of back to your question, right? What are the common fears, anxieties, concerns that are coming up? I'm going to break this down into three. The ones that I'm going to highlight are the three most common ones that I'm hearing about in, in my world of private practice. Um, they're really anxiety, guilt, and a lot of behavioral issues um, that, that come up mostly. Okay. So the first being anxiety, right? This buzzword that we all hear about in the mental health world yeah. today. Um, and sure, anxiety, yeah? Divorce right off the bat means fundamental changes. Our routine is completely turned upside down. Parents too, but for kids, everything's changing. So house splitting into two. Schedules, um, vacations, schedule, you name it, it's forever changed. After school activities, childcare. You name it, it's changing precisely, Max. So um, there's absolutely no surprise that globally speaking, whether you're a well-adjusted kid before or maybe even an extremely anxious kid before a divorce, that many kids are going to be anxious. Of course. Um, and that's a very broad generalization, but that's kind of no surprise there, right? Um, one way we might address anxiety no matter what age, is by trying to build back some really clear expectations and routines as a way of easing concerns and anxiety across the board. So what does that look like, let's say, in a really young kid? Okay, I'm thinking like even like, let's say four to five-year-old is some visual activity. So a calendar that would start to demonstrate, okay, you're going to be at mommy's house on these days. And I mean like physically. Yeah. Up a calendar for a kid. They can actually um, see what this is going to look like. Exactly right. So it can be a super helpful tool to say, you know, they might not be able to process that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they're not able to keep that in mind, but that they could visually see. And I would recommend, of course, demonstrating this at both houses, not just one, but posting on a wall where they're going to be each day, maybe with some stickers to involve them in the process and, and as an activity that could be exciting for them. Um, you know, showing them where they're going to be on each day as a way of, of building in some structure in terms of their living arrangements. Um, some reassurance is inherently built in by establishing a consistent routine. And ultimately that will help with some anxiety. So I think that's a really simple um, but helpful way to start aiding anxiety. And one, again, kind of helpful tool for parents is to stick to that routine. So one thing that you know, Max, in the, in the collaborative practice, um, mental health professional role in collaborative practice is parenting time, right? So I'm, I'm frequently talking to parents about building these parenting time schedules right. and starting to, to put them into play in the family. Um, and parents are often kind of deviating on what works and flipping back and forth and trying new routines. And I, I, I sound like I'm, I'm really repeating this ad nauseum, but I always am saying to parents as consistent as you can be and as 
quickly as you can establish, the sooner you can establish something that you can stick to, the better it's going to be for your kids because that consistency and predictability, excuse me, predictability is so, is so key and so right. helpful for your kids. I always say we don't, I always say life doesn't exist in a vacuum and we have to build in some account of flexibility, but ambiguity um, breeds anxiety and ambiguity sure. breeds problems. So I, sure. I, I totally agree there. Flexibility is really important, but especially during this major transition for kids, um, the more structure that we can build in, the less anxiety we'll see. So, right. So more structure, less anxiety. And as, as especially with the proximity to this transition, I think the more structure would be most helpful for families. That makes sense. Um, yeah. So the second kind of common concern that I'm hearing about is this guilt, which comes back to the egocentric nature of kids, right? So common worries that they've done something to cause this divorce or leading up to it, or what have I done, right? And this may come up at nighttime, trouble falling asleep, which kind of will lead into my third concern that comes up, which is behavior issues, but younger kids especially may be having a lot of this guilt. Um, so even if parents think that they've explained it and you know, express that this is not your fault. There's a lot of work to be done in explicitly kind of reassuring kids that this is not in any way related to them. And I, you know, this is going to also come into your next question, but a mental health professional, a therapist can be so helpful in aiding this communication between parent and child, and also in working with a child in a supportive role. Um, to work through this guilt. I think that's a really important Absolutely. I, I, I'm pretty upfront with clients that if they have minor children, I, I don't want to say I require, but I strongly encourage to at least meet with and have a relationship with a mental health professional. Because even if you think you have the most well-adjusted children and you and your co-parent agree on everything, it's just a great idea to have that built-in resource because you never know when th something's going to go off the rails. So uh, I, I couldn't agree more in terms of the value there. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> um, the third kind of most frequently talked about or, you know, concern that's brought up when I'm meeting with families is this idea of behavior issues. And it can look like a, you know, variety of, of issues, but you may see children starting to act out more frequently, which sure, it can be a, a symptom of anxiety, but it can also be a desire to kind of test limits or figure out what new boundaries are, especially now that we're at two houses with new rules and, and different sets of expectations. So how might we address that is by setting a more structured, again, that word structure, environment um, with really clear boundaries and expectations of behavior at both homes. And the best way that I explain this to parents is by setting the same boundaries or as close to the same, of course, at both homes, right? So, you know, sometimes we'll hear that, you know, mom's house is a free for all where dad holds extremely firm boundaries. Well, what do we think is going to happen in that case? Dad, the kids are always going to want to be at mom's of house. Course. Dad's, right? If so one's the warden and one's the camp counselor, it, it, you exactly. know, I always describe right. when I'm making parenting time plans, you know, I don't think one parent should be the asparagus parent and one the ice cream parent. What I mean by that is it's not fair for one parent to be the healthy warden and the right. other it's all fun and ice cream because of course exactly. kids especially younger ones are going to gravitate towards the fun i'm definitely not going where there's asparagus so i <laughs> would say you know screen time this comes up a ton in today's society right and i know one of the cases we're working on this comes up with screen time all the time so if you know Ooh. for instance in terms of repercussions if screen time is coming up like you've taken away screen time at mom's house, but now today is transition day and you're going to dad's. My recommendation is always that that repercussion stays, right? So what does that mean for parents? Communication is really yeah. key that you guys are maintaining this open it line. Means there needs to be a consistency. And and, there, and that goes back to your point about a united front, because exactly. if, if one, if, and punishments, a, you know, I guess a hot button word, but if there's, if there's consequences happening at one house and those aren't relaying, you're building in this favoritism. Yep, I think that's exactly right. And across the board here, whether it be anxiety, right, this idea of guilt, behavior issues, I think, you know, structure, consistency, clear boundaries, all these things are coming up again and again through these three concerns. So um, they're really important ideas and concepts here and, and all things that I'd be happy to talk with any family about. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brett. And 
as Brett said, if you're contemplating a divorce or going through it and your children may be manifesting uh, exceeded anxiety or guilt or any behavioral issues, please reach out to Brett, uh, Brett Sherman Counseling in Birmingham, Michigan. I'm also happy to facilitate any introductions or recommendations to her. Brett, thank you so much for your time and have a terrific day.